All right, good morning. Good morning. I hope you are still in your jammies if you're home. Some people here are still in their jammies, so it's all right. <laughs> it's good. And after this Sunday, I'm going to be a Janesville resident, but I'm sure I'll be back in Madison. How can I not be? Good to have been able to spend this time with you as we shove Dean out the door. And uh, here I am. And tomorrow, Rob Koski comes. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I know you'll be nice to him, and he'll be nice to you. So that's a good thing. Food Pantry is collecting oats any time during February. You can drop it off church or in the black tub outside the office entrance from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday. Super Bowl offering next week. Can you believe it? It's the Super Bowl. So the offering is happening again at Lakeview, our emergency benevolence fund. We, through that, we've been able to help many people with varying needs over the past couple of years, and you know people's needs are growing and growing inside the congregation and outside the congregation. Because of this needed assistance, Emergency Benevolence Fund is getting low again. So send donations to replenish this fund for our Super Bowl offering next week. You're not getting the sub. You used to do subs, right? You're not getting a sub. We used to do Super Bowl subs. I don't know. Uh, thank you for your continued support and ministry at Lakeview. You can use Banco Give Plus page, and Laura has included the Super Bowl option for that. Blood Drive in another week, February 9th, is the next Red Cross Blood Drive at Lake U. You can talk to your own Dracula here, Terry, who is uh, organizing that again. And you get a famed $5 Amazon gift card. Don't go crazy. All right, you can only do it once. You can't rack up those $5 Amazon gift cards. Drive through dinner. I had the enchiladas last time, it was fabulous. We've served 550 meals in the last three months. It's February 19th, free will offering if you'd like to do that. If you just want to drive through and pick up your tater tot casserole, that's just fine. There's a vegetarian option and you have to make a reservation so they know how many tater tots to be slicing up. All right, I think announcements. Annual meeting follows this time together. Um, anything else I should be saying? We're good? All right. We begin our worship the way we began our lives in the Christian community. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin in the name of the Mother who embraces the Christ who is our brother and the Spirit who sends us out. Our call to worship is day by day which you know very well, I'm sure, and you can, if you don't, oh well, just make it up. Uh, you can hum at home or you can sing at home. I'm going to put on my mask when I sing. That's probably what we would all appreciate. And we'll, we'll sing it twice, day by day. Here we are, Lord.
Our Gospel this morning from Mark chapter 1. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing the man and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please join me in prayer. God, you are good. You call us into your goodness. It overflows in our lives. Help us to be aware, to be alert, to be in your presence and your abundance throughout all that faces us in these days. We pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. These last weeks, most of the weeks of January, we've been hearing from the Gospel of Mark. Well, Mark starts with an adult Jesus. You don't hear any angels singing, there's no shepherds, there's no manger. Mark says we're getting right to the point of what's happening when Jesus of Nazareth was with us. Mark jumps right in immediately is Mark's word. Jesus is baptized by his cousin John in the Jordan and Mark says the spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. There wasn't any snow in that wilderness, but we know what wilderness is. During the 40 days in the desert where Jesus was, he was tempted by Satan. You can have a show of hands by, at home. Are you ever tempted by Satan? We won't do it here, just in case people don't get online. But yeah, it's rough. And Jesus knew what it was like to be in the wilderness. His resources gone, limited, and he was tempted. But after successfully fighting off his own temptations, Jesus tempted. Jesus invites Simon and Andrew, James and John to follow him. And so he's already got this whole contingent of sort of ragtag guys, fisher folk. And they go with him into the synagogue to begin the official start, the public part of Jesus' ministry. And what happens? A demon pops up in the synagogue. Have you ever seen someone possessed by a demon? Maybe under your breath you say they're possessed by a demon. But in the movies, in the movies, it's more dramatic. We don't usually have that kind of a situation in this century, but in the century that we're in this morning with Jesus, it was pretty common. It was fantastic. We think of heads spinning and split piece hoop or something coming out of their mouths. I mean, that's what we think of as a demon. But the people in Jesus' day, had no question whatsoever if there was a demon present. Demons were mezakim, mezakim. 
And that means one that does harm. A demon does harm. And demons were set out to cause people harm. According to traditional Jewish belief at that time, demons could eat, drink, and have children. They were considered to be everywhere. It was said that a person had 10,000 demons on their right and 10,000 demons on their left. They, they were pretty thick around folks. They lived in spots where it was dark very often and there was no cleansing water. They lived in the desert and they were believed to be especially active in the midday heat and they were not just in the desert but everywhere. Demons, it was believed, worked through certain animals. Snakes, bulls, donkeys, mosquitoes. Now that one I believe. <laughs> Whether or not you believe in demons, the people of Jesus' day did. They were convinced demons were a real part of their everyday world. They also believed that when the Messiah came, demons would be no more. The Messiah could cast out demons, and the fact that Jesus did this, cast out a demon out of the man with the unclean spirit, signaled to everyone that he could be the Messiah. I do believe in demons, I have to tell you. Not as defined here, but I believe in demons. I think they're alive and they're well today. I don't picture horns, I don't see a pitchfork, I don't see some kind of horrible looking person as I did when I was a child. I know there are demons, demons that steal joy, that take hope, that take our dreams, that sap our strength. Demons are those things that turn our lives into a burden, make life miserable. Demons are things that control us rather than us controlling them. Alcohol, drugs, anxiety, worry about doubt and fear. Maybe your credit card is your demon. Demons get the other hand when we feel powerless to control them, whether that demon is a bottle or a little piece of plastic. The message today that we hear this ancient 2,000-year-old story that comes into your home, your kitchen, your living room, this sanctuary, is that Jesus has the power to drive demons away. Everyone's demon is different. What is it that takes away your happiness and zaps your energy? What has the ability to pull you away from knowing God, from knowing God's grace and freedom, love and joy? Is it alcohol? Is it depression? Cancer? Divorce? Name your demon. That's an important part of all of this. Name your demon. The point of the story, Jesus has power to overcome our demons, ancient and present day demons. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus first confronted demons in the desert when he was alone. He knew them face to face with evil. And in this story, the demons in the synagogue Wait a minute, I thought people went to worship to get away from demons. Isn't that one of the reasons why you do it? But Jesus finds demons in the synagogue. He finds a presence in this holiest of places that will pull people apart, that will make them question God's presence, that will frazzle them to the point of this shouting, is driving them crazy. Demons take any opportunity. They take any opportunity to take over. And they have to be cast out, 
pushed aside, eliminated. And Jesus the Christ has the power to do this. We've done this in the church in the past, cast out demons. There were demons in the holy place, in the community around Jesus. There were demons where slavery was accepted, promoted, tolerated, initiated by the church. We continue that kind of oppression very often in the church when we don't look at and face the demon of racism, the demon of inequality. The church participates, but Jesus Christ uses every possible way to cast that out of this community. Your work, your examining, all that you've done in this little community of Lakeview spreads out to cast out those demons. There is a demon of inequality when women weren't allowed the same dignity as men. Baptized, but not allowed full participation. Hello, that doesn't happen anymore in lots of places. The demons have been cast out, cast out by examining them and naming them. And we need to continue to do this. Driving demons out takes effort. It doesn't come easily. In this gospel, we hear the demon posed as a man convulsed, his body shook, and he cried out, and he came out of the man. Naming the demons means knowing them, acknowledging them, seeing where this isn't just brokenness, but it's evil that has permeated and needs to be cast out, needs to be named. The people watching were amazed at the intensity of all of this. And we learned that Jesus came face to face, evil squarely in his vision, and drove it away. Demons get in the way of our relationships. Our relationships with each other, our relationships with God, they keep us from being the person God intends us to be, keeping us away from each other in a living, loving, mutual community. Demons keep justice and equality in our own country at bay. It's not easy to name the demons. It might make you unpopular. It takes effort. It takes faith, courage, persistence, and community. But together in the community of Christ, there is the strength to do this. The strength to name the demon and with Jesus Christ present in your study and your reflection and your truth telling, the demons get cast out. In Jesus' day, this news spread that he had the power to cast out demons. The news spread, and it's still spreading today, that a community, a community of people loving in the presence and the power of Jesus can invite folks in, even though their demons are hanging off them and traveling around, and say, you don't have to live that way anymore. You can live in this way of acceptance. You can live in this way of tolerance with each other. When we call each other in Jesus' name, when we see Jesus' face in us, in each other. The hymn we're going to hear, I have to give a little intro. You can cough and clear your throats, you singers, in a minute. Uh, one of my favorite movies, Places in the Heart, it's old. Anybody? Places in the Heart? All right, all right. It's a wonderful movie of uh, facing demons and reconciliation and people who thought they couldn't come together coming together. It's set in the South and the racism is thick. The racism is uh, more, more clear than you might find it here in the up North. But it's still the same kind of divisions. 
Well, they come through the whole story. I won't relate it all now, but they come through the whole story. And the last scene in the movie, they're sitting in church and they're passing the communion plate. They aren't good Lutherans. They don't come up. They pass the plate around. And they're passing the plate of bread and juice, I'm assuming, person to person and present in that assembly of people, in that community of people, are some of the people who have died. Some of the people who uh, had divisions in the community, black people, white people, they're passing the plate along and the hymn you hear is Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, I won't go any further. <laughs> You'll be able to hear that very soon. It's a beautiful hymn. It's the first time I ever heard it. I, I didn't know that hymn. But it just brings to me in uh, re, uh, that scene from the movie and that reminder that a community is made up of people you didn't always get along with. But you can be right there together with them. Especially when you're sharing the bread and wine, you're sharing all that Eucharist means in the way of thanksgiving. Well, as we hear Blessed Assurance this morning, bring it into your community, people that you might have a hard time with, people that might not be the folks you want to sit next to. You don't have to sit next to too many people here, but other times you might sit next to people. Bring them all together and have the assurance, have the realization, have the confidence that Jesus is not only yours, but Jesus is in that community. And in this community here and scattered throughout our technology this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, always at rest. I hear my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his good. Lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day
That was every bit as good as Places in the Heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let us pray. Spirit of the universe, spirit of my heart, I welcome you into my life. Come visit the places within me where love has yet to find a dwelling place. Breathe within all of my existence with the power of your transforming grace. I open my entire being to you and thank you for the gift of your presence. I invite you to hum along again or sing out day by day.
grace upholds us. God's peace surrounds us. God's love flows through us. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody, amen. 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 All right, good.